Um, about a month ago, a reporter asked me why people were just now finding out about what's going on in municipal courts. And my answer to that reporter is reflected in what I heard in the comments earlier and in the breakout sections is, depends on what you mean by people. Um, the people who are poor in this region and who are African American in this region know exactly what's going on in these courts. And they've known for 50 years. And the only people who don't know what's going on are the people who aren't in this room right now. And I would, I would call attention to the fact that besides Judge Vatterock, who I saw in the room earlier, um, I don't see anybody from the municipal court system here tonight. I don't see a single prosecutor or judge. I don't see anybody here on the night to discuss municipal courts at all. So, in spite of the fact that people are contacting the commissioners and saying they're taking this seriously, um, I think it speaks volumes that they're not here in the room right now. Um, to Judge Vatterot's credit, we don't agree, I don't agree with everything that his proposals or his committee, but he takes the issue seriously. He's been spending a lot of time on it, and he's making some serious proposals. And I would, uh, before I go on to what I was really going to talk about, um, I would hope that the rest of the lawyers and judges and prosecutors in this region who are making money off the backs of poor people in this region would show up and uh, take this seriously as well. So, what, what our clients have been telling us for five years, our clients are primarily the homeless in the region and the working poor, and if you ask them how municipal courts work, they say a couple of things. One thing is they make people poor and they keep people poor <laughs> and they prevent people from exiting poverty when they try. Um, our, our work, again, is with the homeless and, and when we began, we were brand new lawyers. My co-founder, Michael John Voss, and John McCann and I went to St. Patrick's Center, which if you don't know it, it's a great organization, does great work in the city of St. Louis help, helping the homeless. And the only reason, you might ask yourself, why do the homeless need lawyers? Well, it's because the, the primary obstacle preventing homeless people from getting off the streets and into housing and jobs and treatments are warrants for their arrest. A warrant for their arrest in a municipal court for being poor. A warrant for their arrest in a municipal court for being unable to pay fines that were assessed that were too high to begin with. Um, the city of St. Louis spends $10 million a year to prevent and end homelessness. That money goes to social service agencies in order to provide housing and jobs and treatment to the most vulnerable in our society. That money can't be spent effectively because of the existence of the municipal court system. That money cannot help people get off the streets, help the most vulnerable among us, among us and save our region money because of the existence of the municipal court system. Um, so there are, there are stories that we've heard in the last five years, and I know most of the folks in this room have uh, been familiar with it. For the benefit of those who are listening to this or watching this, I'll, I'll, I'll say that um, clients have told us that they've been denied access to courts, and that I heard that earlier in the room. For years, we heard people talking about how uh, mothers would go to court with their children, and they would be told that mom could come in, but the kids couldn't, because the kids weren't on the dock at that night. And so you've got a poor person who's come to court to pay their fines and fees, maybe they're on a payment docket, come to court to make their payment, and they're denied access to the court. So that creates a, a tough choice for mom. She can go into court and leave her children on the parking lot, or not go into court and get a warrant issued for her arrest. And what we've been hearing for years was that person who had been made the decision to go into court and pay their fines to avoid the arrest and who was arrested on the courthouse steps for child endangerment. And that's, that happens, uh, it doesn't happen a lot, but it doesn't, happen, happen, doesn't have to happen very often for people to say, I'm not going to court on my night if I can't get child care and run the risk that I'm either going to get a warrant for my arrest or I'm going to get arrested when I go in and make a payment. Um, the other thing that I'll highlight real quickly because I know our time has been condensed is Four people who have been arrested on a warrant for the inability to pay their fines. They've been, to be, to be frank, what they've been arrested on is not showing up in court. But they didn't show up in court sometimes because of the decision I just laid out, sometimes to get into the money to pay, and they were afraid they were going to be arrested. And they have legitimate reason to fear they're going to be arrested. They're threatened routinely with arrest on the payment docket, 
There are some courts where they are taken from the courthouse to a what they call the dungeon below the court and held in a room that is not fit for human human inhabitants and held there and extorted until they make a payment. That's not one person that told us. That's, that's ten people that told us. There's an article written in your paper in St. Louis Post Dispatch who told you that, and it's just ignored. Um, but folks say that they've been brought in on a warrant for failing to appear, and when they're brought before the judge, they say, Judge, I don't have the money. I'm homeless. I'm poor. And the judge says, I don't care. Go out in the hall, get on that pay phone, call everybody you know, and try to get some money. And, uh, and, you, might, and you might be able to go home tonight. And that's illegal. It's unconstitutional. We ought to be ashamed that's going on in our backyard. Our, our paper that we issued was just a, an attempt to take seriously what our clients told us, which was that they were being profiled, they were being racially profiled, um, and that they were being exploited because they were poor. When you put those two things together, nobody was listening to what they were saying. Uh, when we dug into the numbers, they said for years, this isn't about public safety, this is about the money. When you start looking at the budgets of these towns and how much money they make off these courts, it's hard to, it's hard to refute that. When you've got the second highest source of revenue in many of these towns being gen revenue generated from municipal courts, and it's $2.7 million in one town and it's $3.1 million in another town, it's hard, to, it's hard to say, no, it's not about the money. And I know from my, my private practice, I've got a client right now who's facing charges in an unnamed municipality who's charged with possession of marijuana and possession of drug paraphernalia. And for the low, low price of $1,000, he can turn that into a, park, a littering ticket. <laughs> this is a system that works for poor, for rich people yes, right. and doesn't work for poor people. Yeah, right. And it doesn't work for black people in our region. And it works for lawyers and judges and prosecutors here who make their living off of it. Um, and was, and as far as solutions, I know we're supposed to be talking about solutions. I support Senator Schmidt's um, proposed legislation that would cap revenue at 10%. I think that's a great start. I would, uh, I would also support the consolidation or abolition of these municipal courts. It's not necessary. <laughs> we don't have to have a municipal court system. You don't have to have a court in your backyard to enforce your municipal court ordinances. They could be enforced in St. Louis County in the Associate Circuit Court level. Now that would take some doing, but they could be enforced there. Um, the other thing is, we should be humiliated into doing something about this because Montgomery, Alabama was just sued for operating a debtor's prison, much like the ones that are operating in our county, and they figured out how to do something about it. Now, it took being shamed and being sued and the threat of federal intervention. Uh, hopefully, we don't have to go that far, but the answer there was uh, Alec Karakatsana said equal justice under law was able to get a settlement that included a provision of attorneys for everyone. Um, everyone who's facing charges where they might be jailed, and make no, make no mistake, if you're standing in municipal court and you don't have the money to pay, you might end up in jail one day. So uh, lawyers for everybody, and they did as a very simple thing. They created a form, everybody had access to the form, you simply state how much income you have, and they proportion the fines to your income. Yeah. It's a very simple thing, um, and people then, they were assessed a fine for their infractions, and they were allowed to make small payments, as low as $10 a month. Um, that's, it's, you're not allowed to make $10 a month payments anywhere I know of in St. Louis County. Um, and the other alternative is community service, but it would take some, some work to provide community service in a way that would actually benefit the community. I'm not talking about lining the pockets of a private probation company. I'm talking about someone trying to find a way to make probation, to make community service help the people who need the help the most. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.